Okay, so I'm going to start off this review with a little story. Now, back in 2017, I went to the ECSC, the East Coast Scale Challenge. See the shirt representing here? It was a great time, amazing event. Just the trails were phenomenal, people were awesome. But, you know, during that time, I was driving a Class Zero truck, uh, my, my Blazer, my RC four-wheel drive Blazer. It was pretty awesome, but I was watching all the other guys drive and the Class Two crowd really caught my eye. It looked like a lot of fun. And uh, I was there with my buddy, Tony Phelan from Competition X. And, uh, you know, we thought about what would we build? We were sitting there at one of the picnic tables and we thought, you know, we should build something like a four-door cab up front with a, a simple bed in the rear. Are you getting where I'm going with this? The truck that we thought about building that we thought would be awesome for class two is basically right here. The new RC four wheel drive C2X. This I'm pretty excited about. You know, this is a very cool looking truck and you can literally pull it out of the box and drop it right into class two competition. They give you everything you need in the box to drive this thing. So if you are a comp driver type of person, it's ready for you. Or if you're just ready to go out and have a lot of fun with a scale style of vehicle, this is right up your alley too. All right, we need to go over this in, in pretty great detail. It's been a while since I've had an RC four wheel drive vehicle here on the channel. So I'm really excited to show this to you guys. And this is a great vehicle to really showcase. All right, up front here, we've got the Marlin two uh, front bumper basically. And, and look at the position of this. It's nice and high up. And uh, you know, we've got a great approach angle here to really clear and get this truck up and over, you know, whatever is in front of it. So I really like this setup. Uh, you know, right behind here is, is the showstopper. This Mojave 2 four-door body set, uh, you know, it's been out there for a while. It, it looks cool. I like the look of this, you know, it, it speaks to me as classic RC four-wheel drive. You know, when you see this body, you think of the company automatically. So it's it's a pretty cool setup, but what's really nice is they painted this thing and, and it's, it's pre-trimmed. It's a hard body. Uh, so, you know, all this together, it's just really, really cool. This, this gray cement gray type of paint job, you know, near flawless. They did a great job with it, way better than I could paint, you know, and my, my recent paint jobs are horrible. I'm really excited that I got a nice finished body right out of the box. I mean, I think I'm going to scratch this thing up, but uh, you know, it looks great right out of the box. And, and that's what you deserve when you're buying a new kit. Uh, they even went ahead and painted the window trim around the edges here, really nice. And then they've got the plastic window glass, you know, on the inside as well, really nice. We've got some uh, windshield wipers in the front, and then we have the Mojave rubber mirrors here. And uh, I did notice that in the, the decal stuff, uh, the decal bag, I'll show you in a little bit, they do give you chrome decal mirrors to put on there. So that's, that's a really cool addition to it. On the side here, we've got, you know, door handles, of course, a little detail. Uh, and then the body screws on with the screws that you see here on each side. And, and hopefully that that's the only thing, if I remember correctly, that, uh, you know, you need to take this body off. But, you know, we've got marker lights in the front here. The front grille has a, a radiator behind it, um, clear lenses for the headlights. So we've got that scale detail that you, you want out of a, a rig. Now, as you can see, the, the fender wells are pretty well cut out. You know, it's cleared clearance from the factory. Uh, so you get the full articulation without any body scrub there uh, to, to hold up your you know driving through your lines and stuff like that but uh, inside the cab here it is a full interior uh, you know we've got a right hand drive setup but you know, steering wheel uh, decals on the dash shifter knob inside and everything two bench seats inside so it's got a great look to it it's all pretty much black except for you know the decals on the dashboard um, you know, but you go ahead, go paint that if you want to. Uh, I might actually go ahead and do it. You know, it looks that cool. I want to detail this thing a, a bit more at some point, but right out of the box, uh, you know, it gives you that scale realism that uh, you would want out of a scale rig that would, would drive in class two or you know, on the trails. Now back, we got the utility bed here. This is made out of a Delrin, a machine Delrin, uh, and it's pretty neat. It's got some, some machine lines to it, basically. It looks really cool. You know, I think this is just an open possibility to, to detail it a bit more add your own accessories to the back of it, but uh, really nicely put together with uh, some steel hardware to really secure everything. And then it integrates into the frame. So it's a nice rigid setup overall. All right, I'm gonna go pull the body off of this so I could tell you about all the details underneath it. And we'll get to the accessories that it comes with as well. Okay, I was right. It's just four screws to get the body off. And now we've got the chassis exposed so I could tell you all the details here. And let's start off with the C2X chassis itself. 
Uh, it's a billet aluminum chassis, black anodized, of course, as you could see. Uh, and it's a really nice setup. We've got the a CMS brace up front here uh, to support the servo. Even the front bumper mount is aluminum, which is really cool. And the rear cross brace here, or rear bumper uh, plate is, is aluminum. And you can go and put LED lights in here. Uh, but really nice look to the frame uh, as well. Uh, there are aluminum shock hoops to support the shocks. And there are a number of holes in the rear of the chassis so you can move the shock hoop if you need to. Now, I what I really like here is on the bottom, there is a Delrin skid plate. And uh, you know that's just really cool in my opinion. Uh, it definitely helps uh, allow the truck to slide over uh, rocks and stuff like that with ease and not get hung up uh, like you know an aluminum plate would uh, which could get marred and everything like that so that's really cool to see uh, we have the simple plate up top here and this is where your battery is going to go uh, they give you velcro straps in the kit so you go use the supply battery drop the supply battery right there in that open space and uh, that really rounds out the, the the new c2x chassis here uh, you know really simple setup up, really nice easy layout to work on and everything like that now let's move on to the drivetrain stuff and uh, on the uh, let me flip the truck over here we've got d44 axles front and rear you know center mounted pumpkin on it uh, but these are the plastic axles so inside we do have metal gears we've got ball bearings and in the front we've got universal axles out to the steering knuckles uh, and then you know a metal shafts out to the, the wheels in the rear uh, but it's a it's a really nice setup three link truss mount in the front uh, four link in the rear we'll, we'll talk about the suspension in a little bit but the caster blocks everything's composite here but what i really like about the the spindle on this is it is uh, captured on both sides for the steering link so it's not just a single arm coming out for the for the steering uh, a bit more rigid uh, the way that's designed so uh, it's a pretty neat axle setup you know it looks really good in my opinion The you know the ball bearings of course uh, support everything throughout i mentioned that before and then we have these new slider styles uh or from what i've read it's a redesigned slider uh for this so we still have the universals the metal universals with with really heavy duty cross pins in there and then these uh, slider shafts here are plastic and they have this uh these extensions over it that basically go over where the pin is to, to secure the pin in place. And uh, I did notice there is a bit of slop in these things still, uh, especially in the rear on this one. So uh, something to watch out for when you're you're going out and, and driving this thing. Uh, you know, definitely just keep an eye on the axles. I just had an axle issue with another rig I tested. But anyway, we'll see how that works out. Now onto the transmission. This is the R3 single speed transmission. And I do love RC four wheel drives transmissions. Uh, they look really cool just simply because they are a cast aluminum but inside the gear cases here are mod 8 pitch gears uh, which is really nice. It's a durable gear. We've got a Delrin spur and slipper clutch set up. And as you can see, the forward motor mount set up here, uh, which you know makes motor work really easy, gets that weight forward on it, and uh, should work out really well. Small pinion gear, you know, for, to get the uh, the power down. Now over here is the hammer transfer case. We've got this the simple solid shaft going from you know the R3 over to the hammer case. And again, the hammer case has those 0.8 mod gears inside, and it's a cast housing on it. So uh, you know, I love that particular setup. RC four-wheel drive just kills it in that respect. Now let's move on to some of that suspension stuff again. There are RRD shocks on here. So it's an aluminum shock. It's got a really cool scale look to it. And when it's peeking out from the wheel wells, it looks really awesome. And it feels really smooth too. I mean, it actually feels kind of like there's very little oil on the inside of these. So I might have to go and pull them apart, but uh, just to check everything out in there. But we got, you know, metal collars on this, metal perch on the bottom, and it's a dual spring set up with a, a collar in the center to keep those springs in line uh, but overall it's a cool looking shock now on the bottom let me flip this over as i mentioned there's a three link set up in the front four link in the rear and these are aluminum links on this so uh you know no plastic stuff except for the ends those are plastic but the the balls on the inside of the rod ends are metal as well so it is a, a great setup you know i think it's got the right geometry obviously this is rc four wheel drive we're talking about it's built for the comp class so i'm guessing you know it's got to be the right geometry you know the pan hard bar is up front i didn't notice any crazy bump steer or anything like that when i was messing around with it, it didn't seem like there was there was a lot as i mentioned before too we've got the chassis mounted uh, servo up front we've got a nice aluminum drag link and a steering link that you know goes across and actually clears the, the front uh, differential case uh, as it's bent a little bit to get around that so suspension looks great on this chassis looks cool on this i like the drivetrain on here let's talk wheels and tires the rims on here are rc four-wheel drive stamps 
steel wheels, they're a B-lock style wheel. Uh, they have the aluminum hub in the center and they're wrapped with these Mickey Thompson Baja MTZ tires really soft compound here and they've got a pretty firm insert in them uh, but just the the compound on these tires are really nice I'm sure these are gonna grab really well now let's talk about the electronics because we got something special going on here too now up front this is the twister servo this has 300 ounce inches of torque at 7.2 volts that's pretty awesome for a ready to run vehicle and something that uh, you know they're talking about throwing right into the comp. That's what you're going to need. The other thing you're gonna need is an aluminum servo horn and they have that on here. 25 spline aluminum servo horn. That's very cool. The motor here, we've got the 35 turn motor. All right, now onto the speed controller. Obviously it's a brush motor speed controller to go with the motor. Uh, it's the Outcry 3 and it is LiPo compatible. Uh, there's basically the little chip that you can move around in there to switch from nickel metal over to LiPo if you wanna go and use a LiPo battery. Now, you know, it's all wired up. Everything's pretty nicely laid out too. They got some zip ties securing the wires to the chassis and everything. We got some bullet plugs. It makes motor changing easier for those that don't know how to solder. Uh, the only complaint I have about this is it still has the Tamiya style connector on the speed controller here. And, and it, you know, we're in the days of T plugs, you know, at the very least. So that should have been on this uh, truck, in my opinion, uh, at least to start off with. But, uh, you know, if you know how to solder or you have a local hobby shop near you, that's uh, easy to fix. Now, right behind the speed controller is uh, the XR uh, receiver. Uh, it's a four channel receiver. Everything's plugged in, ready to go. You don't have to worry about setting anything. And, and as I mentioned before, the battery pack sits right back here here and that pretty much rounds out the electronics now i guess it's just basically down to talking about the rest of the gear that comes with the kit uh, so let me show you guys that right now and uh, since i was talking about the battery i'll show you the battery that it comes with this is a 3000 milliamp nickel metal hydride pack and uh you know these are basic ready to run starter packs it gets the job done i actually have a few vehicles that i still use these packs with so that'll do fine for this uh it does come with double a batteries i this is a completely ready to run vehicle so it's nice that it comes with double a batteries here and let me show you the xr3 radio system now and this is a pretty decent ready to run radio system from rc four wheel drive i like the phone grip on here it's got a number of dials in the back to set your trims and your endpoint adjustments and everything and uh, it, since it is a three channel radio, it's got this switch over here by your thumb, allows you to operate a third channel if you want to. And those AA batteries go right in the bottom and uh, it's got a pretty good feel to it. It'll be fine out there on the trails. Now it does come with a uh, universal charger. This is an international charger here. Here's all your different plugs for all the different uh, countries. It's got the USA port, uh, USA plug on there from the factory. Uh, but this is, you know, one of your basic wall chargers here. Yeah, it does the job, but you're probably going to want a fast charger. So just a heads up about that. Okay, now I've got a couple other things over here. We've got the uh, manual, so uh, you know, check that out. It basically goes through the kit. Here's the Velcro straps to secure the battery. There are those uh, you know mirror decals that I told you about earlier, and then it's got this uh, card with some metal strips on there, and I'm not exactly sure what those are. So if you know, throw in the comment section below. Probably something obvious, but I couldn't find it in the manual. So finally, we've got some decals here. And uh, you know you can show off your C2X Pride, your RC four wheel drive logos are on there. And we've got these plates that could go onto the, uh, the the bed area. So you know nice little decal set that comes with it, some license plates and stuff. So go customize the look of the rig. You know what? This is very cool in my opinion. Like I said, this is something that I wanted to build. So I you know I'm really excited about it. Really excited about going and trying it out on the trails. If I can, I'm gonna try to get over to a local course area to show it in that respect. But I'm more of just someone that likes to go out and have some fun on the trails. So at the very least, that's what I'm gonna show you. Let's go drive it.
I just drove all over my state to show you guys how this rig works. I tested it out in a number of locations and had a lot of fun with it. I'm gonna start off by talking about the, the bashing field that I took it to. It was a lot of dirt mounds and hills, uh, rocks and stuff to just go through, silty sand beds and stuff. And, and I was looking at it as far as, you know, it does this thing look scale in this element. And, and, and that it definitely does. This truck has a very cool look to it. I like the pinstripes that I put on from the decal kit, really sets the look of it off. But but out there in the dirt, it was a lot of fun climbing up the hills and stuff. Uh, these tires were actually very impressive in that loose dirt and, and just really helped this truck get up uh, some loose dirt mounds. Uh, we've got dirt flying off the wheels, uh, but you know, it has the drive to get up there. And, and for a lot of it, I was just using the stock battery pack. And, and, and in fact, throughout this entire video uh, and, and the action you guys just saw, uh, I was uh, at most using a 2S battery pack on it. And I think the wheel speed was there to get it up. A lot of the stuff that I needed to go over, you know, just kind of trekking through the, the brush and stuff like that. It looks very cool. You know, if you're looking at this truck for, for something scale, because you like hard bodies, uh, you know, it's got the look. And, and it does have the performance uh, to back it up. The suspension on this works really, really well. I like the the approach angle in the front end. I was able to get up a lot of uh, the, the obstacles that were there um, the, the one thing is is the the steering and um, I, I got to talk to you guys about the other areas that I went to but uh, just over in the dirt field the steering there was just fine it's more more of a basher situation just kind of trucking around having fun and uh, you know just enjoying what the truck could do how it looks out there uh, on the uh, on the terrain and and there it looked great after that dirt field, I did go take it up to RC Madness in Enfield, Connecticut, which has an amazing outdoor course for rock crawlers and trail trucks and everything. And there is where it really started to shine what this truck is capable of. And uh, right at the beginning of the course, there is a very steep incline in my opinion. Uh, and this truck went right up and over nice and smooth. Uh, the throttle from the speed controller is, is really smooth. Uh, as far as uh, decent braking through the speed controller, uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's a very hobby wing, uh, quick run like as far as the programming on there. Uh, so the descent was pretty smooth. I did notice a couple of of rundowns where you know it's smoothly descending you got the brake uh, engaged uh, but then it would kind of just don't fold really quickly for a second or two so you know overall the braking is very good for a ready to run speed controller and the, and the throttle response is very smooth 35 to earn motor definitely has the power you need for for most applications uh, for a ready to run type of vehicle uh, now onto the the steering in the comp course that's where this thing needed some more throw. And I noticed that the, the throw was kind of dialed down in the radio system. And I actually uh, mentioned something to RC four wheel drive about it. And they said they kind of dialed things back a little bit for the newbie crowd. Um, so if you are aware of how you're supposed to set your steering endpoints properly, you could actually go over to the radio system and crank up some more steering on that. This will actually, you know, if you crank the steering all the way, the tires will actually hit the links on the inside. It's got that much throw to it, which is which is great. The problem is, is the universal start to bottom out and that's where you get that chatter from and that causes wear. So you gotta be aware of you know how to set your endpoints so you don't get that and still get maximum steering throw. So, so definitely check that out. There is more throw available, just do it properly. So once you uh, crank everything up, it's a lot better, uh, but on the really tricky sections of the course, I did notice some servo stall as well. Uh, and I asked RC4 will drive about that. They were going to look into that, you know, because it's got 300 ounce inches of torque, uh, supposedly in the servo, but there was a couple spots where it, uh, it the steering just collapsed and I was trying to crank it back and uh, it just wasn't moving. Uh, so might need an external BEC. I, I'm not sure, uh, but I do want to you know, just tell you guys everything that I experienced with it. But overall, the servo is much better than a standard servo. Okay, now I talked I talked mostly about power, I got steering and the handling. Um, you know, it doesn't really get hung up. You know, once in a while, I, you know, I would hang up the, the pumpkins on this. They are actually kind of beat up. I ran this truck a lot. Uh, one thing I gotta tell you is, is you know, hard bodies have this kind of thing where you're afraid to drive it. You don't want to scratch the body up. And even with this one, I was a little weary at first, but once I got my first few scratches in here, I started really beating this truck up and it, on the course, uh, you know, just out on the bashing trails and stuff like that. I started really just tearing on this thing and it, it takes a lot 
of abuse. Uh, so I will say this thing is a tank. It is built right. I think they did a great job here. The bottom is just totally scratched up at this point. I'm pretty amazed at, uh, you know, everything that, that I put up with. Now, after that, I took it over to uh, one of my other uh, test locations close by, just a local park. It was kind of raining that day with the, the wet tires. Um, traction was a little bit of a problem there, but these tires on a, a dry surface work really, really well. I like the tire. Even, you know, when I got it caught in some of the, the rock crevices and stuff, you could see the tire twisting in there as it's trying to grab traction. And just as it was about to get there, the slipper would actually go on it. So I might go and tighten down the slipper clutch a little bit. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of cool. If you're a newbie in this and you get caught up, you know that that slipper clutch is there to protect the transmission on it. And I mean, it's a bulky transmission, so it should take a lot of abuse. Uh, I did, oh, I should have told you this earlier on, I did go and fill the shocks with oil. Oil. They do not come filled with oil. They have a couple drops in there just to lubricate everything. And I did go put uh, 30 weight oil in the shocks all the way around and uh, raise the shock collars uh, up almost to the top and the front and uh, to the top and the rear. They were probably about quarter of the way down on the shock body. It was just way too bouncy. It didn't have any droop to it. So, you know, by raising the, the spring collars up, I get a little bit of droop out of there. But I did want to say that because uh, earlier on, I mentioned in the in the features portion of this video that the, the it felt really bouncy. Uh, and that's because there's no oil in there. And, and when I talked to RC four wheel drive about it, it's because they said uh, the comp guys that are going to pick this up are going to want to put their own weight oil in there. It's a ready to run. I think it should have had some oil in there. I think an experienced person would know how to dump it out and put the, the correct oil in there. Um, but, you know, it's pretty easy. Oil costs a few bucks and, uh, you know, you just got to take the shock cap off, fill it about three quarters of the way, just a tad over that, put the cap back on, you're ready to go. So the, so the suspension did feel great out there on the trails because I made that, uh, made that shock oil change or shock oil addition actually so uh you know handling was was really good and when i took it over to uh, uh the appalachian trail along the Housatonic river was my final destination for the test uh, it worked great over there that's where i really kind of noticed a lot of the side hilling uh that you could do with this uh, you have to be careful what you do side hill uh, the angle that you're on the hill uh, because it is a hard body there is some extra weight there and so where i could push a lexan truck uh, you know on the side hill this really couldn't do it i rolled it over a lot this body took a lot of abuse but you know if you approach the hill properly uh, you know, nose first, this thing will pull right up and over. And it doesn't have overdrive in it. You know, the hot new thing now is to come with overdrive. It doesn't have it in there, uh, but it does pull up and over well. And maybe a little bit of weight in the front would help it even more. Um, but, you know, right out of the box, it does very well. In fact, I think I'm actually going to add a little bit of weight to the front. But uh, last thing I want to talk to you about is durability. And again, this thing is beat up. The bottom of it's scratched. The body is pretty dinged up. I'm missing a windshield wiper blade up top. Uh, but uh, it is a tough beast and, and in fact I submerged this thing in water uh, and uh, I guess that's a great waterproof test and it was actually driving just fine uh, you know before during and after being in the water so you know everything so far so good with it my only problem is I dropped my radio system broke my antenna there but uh, the truck itself is in great shape and it's got to keep on going and I can't wait to drive it some more love the feel of a hard body it's a different driving experience and if you've been thinking about driving a truck with a hard body this the c2x is a great truck to start with <laughs>